So in this video, we're going to derive the Fermi function. So in the last video, I kind of just threw the formula for it at you. I said, well, the Fermi function as a function of energy is just equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the energy minus the Fermi energy divided by kt. And that's all fine and good, but where does this come from? Where does this come from? Well, it turns out it comes from thermodynamics. Uh, thermodynamics, and in particular, one perhaps the, the most powerful idea in all of thermodynamics, um, the Gibbs factor. And it's got a kind of a fancy name named after this guy named Gibbs, which personally I think is a pretty cool name. Um, and what, what this guy Gibbs said is that the probability of a given state being occupied with n electrons, uh, it can, they can be any particles, but we're just going to deal with electrons here, is just uh, proportional, so not equal to, but proportional to uh, the, exp the negative exponential of the total energy of that state with n electrons divided by kt. And this is probably the most important formula in all of thermodynamics, other than perhaps the thermodynamic identity, but we, uh, we, we, won't, we won't cover that here. Um, so how do we convert this probability of a given state being occupied? Because this is the probability for a single state uh, being occupied with n electrons. How do we convert this into our Fermi function, the thing that we want? Because we know in reality we're going to have a bunch of states with a bunch of different energies. So let's say if I've got energy on the y-axis and we've got, I don't know, five states at this energy. I don't know, maybe this is 2 EV or something. Uh, four states at this energy. Obviously this is a hopeless underestimate, but you it's, it's just to illustrate a point. There's going to be different numbers of states at different energies, and this is going to be determined by the density of states function, g of e, which we calculated previously. And so we want to find the percentage of states that are occupied. With electrons, so we want to know how many of these states have an electron inside them. And the beauty of the Gibbs factor is that if I know the probability of a single state being occupied, then that's just the same exact thing as the percentage of the states occupied. Because if the probability of this guy is being occupied and this guy and this guy and this guy and this guy is all, for example, 20%, then on average, 20% of those states are going to be occupied, especially as you get a very large number of states, uh, like 10 to the 10 or something then you're going to have almost exactly 20% of those states being occupied. So if we can calculate the probability of a single state being occupied, that will give us the percentage of all the states at a given energy that are occupied. So let's zoom in on a single state. Let's take a look at this, this single state. Uh, and let's draw it nice and let's draw it nice and big. So state, um, we know that the probability of this state having n electrons in it is proportional to e to the minus energy of that state with n electrons divided by kt. But we know from the Pauli exclusion principle that there's either zero electrons, so there's either zero electrons, in which case the state is unoccupied, so the state is just a blank state, or there's one electron in which case the state has an electron in it. So there's only two possible cases here, p of zero and p of one. And from the definition of probability, we know that these two have to add up to one. So p of zero plus p of one must just be equal to one. And so we can use this fact to change this alpha um, from an alpha to an equal sign, we can rewrite p of n as some constant of proportionality. Uh, let's let's call it one over z, um, and that's just to be consistent with the uh, the the rest of the literature on this. 
um, times e to the minus energy over kt. So instead of writing proportionality, we're just replacing, we're, we're saying that proportionality constant is just one over z. Um, so, okay, we can then write, uh, we can then solve for that proportionality constant. So one over z uh, times e to the minus e with zero electrons divided by kt plus one over z times e to the minus e of one electron or the energy of one electron occupying that state divided by kt is equal to one or z um, is just equal to e to the minus e zero over kt my or plus e to the minus e one over kt and we're almost finished we said that our fermi function was just the same thing as the probability of the state having one electron. So we know the proportionality constant now, so we can just directly write that. Uh, we know that it's one over z times the, or not, sorry, not e, uh, times the exponential, the negative exponential of the energy of that state with one electron divided by kt. So we know what z is, we can just plug it in. So that's just e to the minus e1 over kt divided by uh, e to the minus e0 over kt plus e to the minus e1 over kt. And we can make this a little less ugly just by multiplying by e to the e1 over kt over e to the e1 over kt. It's just a common trick, multiplication by one just to make it look prettier. And then our equation just becomes one over one plus e to the e1 minus e0 over kt. And so we're so close. This function looks so much like our Fermi function. It's not even funny. Um, but we're not quite there yet. We need to first figure out what is this e of n. Um, we, so when I wrote down this e of n, what I meant to say is the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of the electrons here or the total kinetic energy of all the electrons. So since we know that the total energy, uh, and so I, I really should have written this as k, not e, uh, to, be, to be less confusing. So I'll rewrite that in, in the expression. Uh, so kinetic energy, kinetic energy. So the, the, we know that the total energy is just the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, or the kinetic energy is just equal to the total energy minus the potential energy. Well, for us, we actually know the total energy of these electrons. It's just the total energy of the state. Uh, so, I don't know, ES. Actually, let me write this as E total because we only care about the uh, energy of the state. So it's the energy of the state multiplied by the number of electrons in that state minus the potential energy which is just this thing called the chemical potential energy, um, or in our case, the Fermi potential energy multiplied by the number of electrons. And so if we evaluate uh, the kinetic energy, if we evaluate the kinetic energy with zero electrons, well, that's just E times the energy of the state times zero minus EF times zero. That's just zero. Uh, so we can actually delete this term in our uh, in our exponential over here. Um, what about k of 1? Well, that's just we plug in n equals 1, and that's the energy of the state times 1 minus the Fermi energy times 1. And so we can just rewrite then our Fermi function in its final form. 1 plus e to the k1, which is just e minus EF over KT. And we're done. That is the Fermi function as a function of energy. Oh, uh, and so I, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any comments, please feel free to post them down below and I'll see you next time.